بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله the killing in the name of Islam has to cease and we أحبت في الله have a responsibility to speak out against and fight it and يجاهدونهم O Nujahidunahum Bilisani Bilisanitina So we have a responsibility to speak out against these people and this evil and its distortions because this is the characteristic of Ibad Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kirim, Walladina la yadruna ma'allahi ilahin akhir. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ نَفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم And those who do not supplicate to other than Allah another God and they do not kill or take a life which Allah has declared sacred or which Allah has prohibited unless it is with the haqq unless it is rightfully so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ يَقْ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتْلَ نَفْسٍ بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْعَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتْلَ نَسَ نَاسَ أَجْمَعِينَ أَوْ نَاسَ نَاسَ جَمِيعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتابه الكريم and the one who takes a life or spreads wickedness throughout the earth it is if they killed all of mankind and the law subhanahu wa ta'ala says or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Awwala ma yukhda bayn al-nas yawm al-qiyama fi al-dima. In a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The first person who will be called to account on the day of judgment will be the one who spilled blood. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, افتركت اليهود على إثنتين وسبعين فرقة، وافتركت النصارى على إثنتين وسبعين فرقة، وستفترك هذه أمة ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار إلا واحدة. كل كل من هي يا رسول الله؟ قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه وصحابي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said. The Jews who break into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects and my Ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. What's the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon spilling blood unlawfully, unjustly, with oppression? Was the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one who spilled blood amongst his companions? Was this a sunnah of the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You have to ask yourself, Ahabatifillah, if you think about supporting these types of groups and we're going to talk about them now first ahabatifillah understand something the groups and we there's so many of them and this is what the the shahid of that hadith of mentioning that hadith the prophet ﷺ said we would break into 73 sects all of them in the fire except one and how many sects and groups have we had in the history of islam so many the shia the rafa the the qadariya the Jahamiya, the Mu'tazila, the Ashaira, the, the Khawarij, all of these groups, these are some of the early groups. But now we have many new groups. Some of them are sects, some of them are his or uh, parties or, or groups like Akhwan al-Muslimin or Jama'at al-Tabliq. But let's talk about, let's get back to the point. The ones that we're discussing today, Habatifillah, is those who are spreading facade throughout the earth by spilling blood. For example, we have ISIS or ISIL or whatever you want to call them. We have Boko Haram and we have Al-Shabaab. ISIS 
what do these groups do? Okay, let's look at this category. Kill, maim civil civilians. This is their main tariqa, is they kill and they maim civilians because those are the people they kill more. They kill probably more civilians than they kill from those people who they're fighting from the Iraqi army, from the Shia and whoever else they're fighting. So they kill and they maim civilians. It's mainly a political drive and we have to understand this rise in the new Khawarij and that if a lot of it, it's not just the revival of the ideology, but it's also the political aspect. What do they do? How do they go against the Sunnah, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How do they try to belittle Islam with their evil actions? How do they yeshiba Yahud? How do they resemble the Yahud and the Zionists? Because they behead, for example, they behead reporters. Where is this in Islam? They bomb in places of worship, like Masajid. How many bombs? Look at Yemen. Recently they just bombed uh, the Shia Masjid in Yemen. We don't con condone, no matter what our differences, no matter even our hatred and, di and enmity between us and those people who curse the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we don't believe in killing and slaughtering and blowing up women and children and putting massage, uh, bombs in Masajid. So they blow up the places of worship. This is their sunnah. They kidnap and rape, and it's well documented. Boko Haram, Abdullah. Wamadraka Boko Haram. These people in Nigeria, what do they do? Nigerian universities. They send women on motorcycles, like for example in Chad, <laughs> blowing up uh, people. Not even security personnel who they are may take fear of and, and so forth, and we'll get to that in shortly. But they blow up Nigerian universities, blow up fish markets like was recently done in the fish market. Who did they kill? What in the world did the civilians do to deserve to be blown up in the fish market? Someone wants to go get some fish and you blow them up. What kind of religion is this? And Islam is free from it. Kidnapping little girls, exporting terror to civilians in, in neighboring states like Chad and other places. Boko is expanding. They've made Bay'a, Bay'a, Bid'iya to ISIS and other groups. Uh, and this is not the time and place to discuss it. Ash Shabab. University killings. Okay, they attack universities. What what bravery? What uh, uh, strength? In the name of jihad, fi sabilillah, wa iyadin billah. The West Gate Mall attacks. So they kill women, children, whatever. They just kill. It, it, all that matters is they spread terror. You see that these groups, they have no point and purpose. They say they want to help the Sharia. They say they want to support the Sharia. But everything they do is they go against the Sharia. So for them, it's a Marxist revolution. It's a revolution of any means necessary. But it's not about Islamic means which are necessary. Westgate Mall killings, Mogadishu hotels, a woman recently, suicide bomber. She was an employee, troubled in the head, under her abaya, she blows herself up. Well, what kind of, uh, what is the fitna does this cause for our Muslim women everywhere who wear hijab and who cover their faces because of these people? The guy in Tunisia kills a, uh, the tourists on the beach. What kind of help for Islam have you done? And the dawah to Islam, to Kitabi Allah Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of these groups have takfiri khawarij beliefs, meaning that they declare other Muslims to be uh, disbelievers, so for them this legitimizes spilling their blood. They rebel against the authority, for example ISIS, they rebel against the Saudi regime, they rebel against the Kuwaiti regime. How do they do this? Because their guys launch attacks from there, they launch attacks and, and blow up uh, and kill Shia in the country, and they uh, attack Masajid, places of worship where the people are going to worship. They spill blood unnecessarily, and they also spill blood of anyone who opposes them. Recently, ISIS fighters were just captured, just recently, 11 of them were executed by one of the Syrian rebel groups while in retaliation for what ISIS had done to beheaded some of their fighters on video. Look at these guys. These guys have the same ideology. They're fighting supposedly for the same goal because they supposedly want the Sharia and they supposedly want to remove Bashar, but they're not hurting Bashar. He's laughing. He's laughing that you have no unity and you slaughter one another. He's throwing more barrel bombs upon the civilians, killing them, and you're beheading the civilians. So who's better? And is this a threat to, if you supposedly want to support Islam, have you threatened Israel? No, you haven't. Instead, some people allege that you're possibly 
working for them and Allah knows best. Anyone who differs in their ideology, they kill them. Tekfiri, Bay'a, Bid'iyya. This is groups like Boko Haram and uh, ISIS because they make uh, Bay'a to this guy, uh, Abu Bakr Baghdadi, who's Majhul. No one knows him. Who's a guy that we know more about him from the U.S. than we know uh, from, from the people of the Sunnah or the people who, uh, or the ulama of any country. We don't know of him. Then lastly, as Shabab, Wumad Rakam as Shabab. Uh, they rebel against the Somali government. So Somalia has been in a, this is a country that's been in war, a Muslim populace, 21 years, no more than 21 years, probably about 30 years now, getting close to. They finally are trying to establish some sort of authority, and Muslim, trying to, uh, you know, secure, and so that people can have business and livelihood, and they can live a life like human beings. But no, these guys, they have no goal. Their whole thing is they just youth, youth with no akal, who blow themselves up and kill, kill soldiers, kill the women in the markets, kill the children while they're going to the stores, kill the people in front, around, and behind the hotels. So they oppose peace, they oppose stability of the population. So what kind of Islam is that? The Prophet mentioned. قال صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم في صحيح مسلم أو في صحيح مسلم البخاري من حديث عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن امرأة وجدت في بعض المغازي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مقتولة فأنكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قتل النساء والسبيان وفي اللف فناها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن قتل النساء والسبيان إن صحيحين is mentioned in the hadith of عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said uh, that, that a woman was found she had been killed in one of the battles that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was fighting I mean she was killed probably unintentionally or what have you so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he forbade that. And in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu forbade killing women and children. And then there's other narrations which show that killing the old, of course, the elderly, and the religious people. But what do these groups do? That's who they target first and foremost. They kill, probably, if we look at the statistics, we will probably find, but let's not speculate, but do it. That's one work for you. How many people they kill? What does Imam know what we said about this, say about this? أجمل العلماء على عمل بهذا الحديث وتحريم قتل النساء والسبيان إذا لم يقاتلوا فإن قاتلوا قال جماهير العلماء يقتلون إمام النووي one of our great respected uh, Shafi'i scholars he said the scholars are united in practicing uh, this hadith meaning this hadith of pro the whole prohibition of killing women and children. This is Islam. And that the impermissibility of killing women and children, as long as they're not fighters, but the majority of the ulama say that if they are fighters, then it's permissible to kill them, to fight them. Uh, Imam ibn Rushd, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, لا خلاف بين أهل العلم في أنه لا يجوز قتل السبيانهم ولا قتل نسائهم ما لم تقاتل المرأة والسبي فإذا قتلت المرأة الصبيح دمها Imam ibn Rushd, he said that there's no difference between the scholars of Islam, أهل العلم that it is not permissible to kill children or kill women as long as they are not fighters. And if they are fighters, then it makes it permissible their blood. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.